But now notice he says, follow, pursue after charity, after love, after agape love, true love, not human love, not the typical type of love that humans kind of want, okay? And desire, be zealous, okay? Covet spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. In other words, that's, that's the thing he tells you to do. Why? Now, notice why he says this. Because it says, for he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But, he said, this is why I want you to prophesy. This is why I want you to desire these spiritual gifts, and I want you to prophesy. I want you to desire to prophesy. And he puts that right there at the top. He said, follow after love, pursue love, and covet spiritual gifts, primarily to prophesy. So there's something about prophecy that God really wants people to get. And he says, for he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification and to exhortation and comfort. Well, there you go. That's why he wants people to prophesy. Why? Because true prophecy is not about a future. It's not a thing. It's not, oh, on this date, this is going to happen. Or that. That's not prophecy. That's the word of wisdom. And so prophecy edifies, exhorts, and comforts. And if he tells us to rather to do that, then what does that mean? That means he wants us to be speaking to one another with edification, things that build up, exhortation, stay, on, you know, stay in the fight, as they say, you know, get moving, that kind of thing, and comfort. When you're going through things, give a word of comfort. But now notice these three areas. Build up, exhort to move forward, or if need be, comfort. So these, this covers almost all of humanity. So you can prophesy literally to any person, really, almost any time. Right? And, and the way you do it is the same way you start ministering healing to people. You, you step out. You, st- you, you start. Many times whenever I, people will ask me for a, a word, they'll say, you know, I, I need a word from God. And what I do is very simple. I begin prophesying. What I do, I say what I know to be true. And I could say the same thing to any other person in that line. But I start with that. And I start, and what I do, I start prophesying. And the Spirit brings the words to my mind to bring it out. And those words will edify. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to edify, exhort, or comfort as the need be. And the Holy Spirit knows that, so he does it. And that when I start doing that, then it switches to a word of knowledge. See, I, I, it doesn't just start, for me, generally speaking, it doesn't just start as a word of knowledge. It starts with, with prophecy. It starts with edification, exhortation, comfort. And because I'm trying to build them up, and get, then God starts giving me the other stuff. And then he starts, that's when it starts getting specific. So I start general. I start by saying whatever I could say to any person. Yeah. God wants you to fulfill his will in your life. Father, I thank you that you are fulfilling your will in this person's life. Your will will be fulfilled through their life. They, they are blessed and they're experiencing your blessing. That your bless, blessings come through. What am I doing? I, all I'm saying is what the Bible says about them that's already facts. And then what am I doing? Some people call that priming the pump. You know, I'm just getting started. And then at some point, see, I pray what I know. And at some point, I start saying what I don't know. Why? Because it kicks in. Why? Because for me to start prophesying to them and to edify and exhort and to comfort means I care about them. So what am I doing? I'm stepping out in love. I'm taking a chance. Because, you know, I, I could be wrong. I could say, when I get over into the word of knowledge, I could be wrong. So I'm taking a chance. Why would I take a chance of being wrong? Because I love them enough to take a chance. And so I start prophesying. I start edifying them and building them up. And then God brings in the things I don't know. But I still have to be bold enough to speak out those things. I just don't keep prophesying. Right? Why? Because he starts telling me other stuff and words come out. And that's how it works. So I prime it. I get it going. But I have to start with love. Follow after love. And prophet and desire, covet, spiritual gifts, but mostly at this point to edify or to prophesy. Does 
Does this make sense? So whenever I'm doing this, I'm following this procedure. Now, saying a procedure makes it sound very, you know, kind of <laughs> black and white, sterile type of thing that this is the way it is. Well, yeah, it is to a large degree, especially when you start. Why? Because every operation starts the same way. Somebody gets cut. Doesn't have to hurt, but you understand what I'm saying? What, cutting into a person is not the operation. The operation is to fix whatever's in them, but to get to there to fix it, first you got to cut. So to, before I can actually deliver the word of knowledge, I have to first follow after love. That's the process. And to follow after love, what am I going to do? I'm going to edify, build up, comfort, and usually by the time I get to comfort, the word of knowledge has already started because I don't know what to comfort. And so the reason I'm tense is because I want you to realize you can do this. You can do this. And just, just find some scriptures that are general and know them, right? Memorize them, whatever you got to do. And then just start blessing a person. Talk to them. Yeah, you know the Lord, the Lord wants you blessed. Well, how do you know that? Because he said that he's already released his blessing. He's already granted blessing. He's already blessed. He's already sent them. They're, you may not know how to receive them, but he's already given them. So we know he wants you to have them. And so you can start with that. And I'm talking about a person on the street. I'm not talking about people in church. You can just start blessing them. You know, God wants, God wants you well. Well, how do you know that? And now, they may or may not know the scriptures, but you, can, you, you don't always have to quote them. You can say, well, because Isaiah 53, uh, 4 and 5 tells it. Uh, Matthew 8, 16, 17 tells it. 1 Peter 2, 24 tells it. And if they know those scriptures, okay. And if they don't, okay, they know you know them. And that's what counts is that you know them because it's going to be on your faith anyway. And then you just say, well, this is why I know that. Well, what do those scriptures say? Well, now, you don't always have to quote them in King James. Quote them in King James, people still don't understand them half the time. <laughs> You know, they don't know what you're saying anyway. So, you know, make it real. Make it, you know, for right then. And just start. And when you do that, now at that point, you are starting to edify, to build up. Right? And then you can even exhort them. You know? And that, that a lot of times, by the time you get to exhortation, you'll start just trying to exhort, but then God will kick in with a word of knowledge. And you'll say, you know, God's had a call on your life since you were 12 years old. And you knew it from 12, and you're like, where is that coming from? And then at the same time, your head's going, hope I'm right, hope I'm right, hope I'm right. Amen. You know? I've actually had, I've had people that I said, you know, God has been trying to, to get some things through to you since you were 12. I actually said that, since you were 12 years old. And, and they're like, I said, and then you have to be careful sometimes, because I'll say, is that right? And I had a person that I did that to, and they're like, not that I know of. I'm like, well, I'm telling you, since you were 12, he was been trying to get across to you, okay? <laughs> so, I mean, if they didn't know, it, just, it didn't mean it wasn't true, just they didn't recognize it, right? I'm like, well, that was an easy one, you know? It's not always, you know, like everybody, oh, thus saith the Lord, I saw thee sitting beneath the sycamine tree in the... No, it's not like that always, right? A lot of times you don't even need to say, thus saith the Lord. They'll know it's God. When you start saying things and reveal the secrets of their heart, mm -hmm. there's been things that God has told me before that he told me the whole sentence, and I said half of it. Why? Because he didn't tell me to say And I'm not saying he said, tell half of it or tell all. No, I'm just saying he didn't say I had to tell it. He showed it to me, and I didn't want to embarrass him. So I said half of it. And they knew I could have said the other half. But I didn't have to. And then they knew that I was protecting them, which is what? following after love. Why? Because love covers a multitude of sins. Love doesn't expose a multitude of sins. Okay? Maybe we just need to say, I have a whole series out there, a whole uh, seminar I did on manifesting the love of God. Maybe I need to teach that again. Because people think, you know, love is something and, it's, and what, they're, what they're thinking ain't it. They got it from modern church and modern motivational speaking or, you know, whatever it is. But the Bible is very clear what love is. 